dropped the Ahsoka trailer, which I really love. They uh, talked about James Mangold doing this Origin of the Jedi thing. Super excited about that. Couldn't be happier. And then they announced the next Star Wars movie. It's going to be set 50. It's going to be a follow-up, a sequel to the greatest Star Wars movie ever made, <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker. I don't know if you could detect my sarcasm. And they're bringing Daisy Ridley back to play Rey again as she is reestablishing the Jedi Order. Set 15 years after the events of uh, The Rise of Skywalker. It's going to be about her reestablishing the Jedi Order. This I know comes... the real plot. What's that? I know the real plot. Oh, yeah, what's the real uh, plot? The real plot. Well, that's part of it. But they took her DNA and they created Palpatine again somehow. <gasps> somehow, Rey has returned. And her <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> <Rey has laughs> returned and again. This comes to us from the folks at Variety who write the following. The Star Wars movie future just came into sharper focus. Daisy Ridley's Rey will be the center of the first Star Wars feature film since 2019's Rise of Skywalker. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy announced at Star Wars Celebration in London on Friday. Uh, Shereem Obeyed Shinoy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, of Miss Marvel fame, will direct from a script by Stephen Knight. Of course, he just recently came on board. He worked on the Avatar film. Uh, the film will follow the events of, follows the events of Rise of Skywalker and will focus on Rey as she builds the new Jedi Order. All right. Let me first say that if you detect some cynicism in my voice about this, it is not about Daisy Ridley. I think Daisy Ridley is a wonderful actress. I think she's really, I've liked her in everything I've seen her in. I haven't liked everything she's been in, but I've always liked her in the porn. Even that one she did with Tom Holland. What the hell was that one again? Oh, yeah. Where the men can all reach us. Anyway, even that stinker. She was, I thought she actually did <laughs> what she walking. could do. What's it called? Chaos walking. Chaos walking. Thank you. I actually thought she did a pretty decent job carrying her roles, but she's good. I think she's very talented. I'm always going to be looking forward to seeing what she does on the screen. So there's nothing to do with her. <laughs> but look, even defenders of the Star Wars sequel series, of which I loosely am one, because I love The Force Awakens, and I liked The Last Jedi. I loved certain parts of it, hated other parts of it, but overall, I liked The Last Jedi. God, I thought the last Rise of Skywalker was a total abysmal piece of garbage. Like, just awful. And there aren't many people like me who will even defend the sequel series to that point. I am shocked by this news. Shocked. Because I have believed, and I've said on this show, that I just can't believe that they would go back to something that has been so divisive. Go back to telling stories in an era about a group of characters that has been so divisive amongst the Star Wars fan base. And I never would have thought that we would see Rey Skywalker back again. Oh, look, I want more Star Wars movies that take place after, you know, the events of The Rise of Skywalker, but, you know, 75 years after it. Or 20 years after it with a different part of the galaxy with a different set of characters. The decision to go back to Ray is a very interesting one. And by interesting, I mean stupid. It's a really stupid decision because you're going to take whatever momentum you do have moving with you right now in terms of kind of maybe, and maybe it's, maybe you'll never be able to reunify this, the Star Wars fandom. Maybe that's a pipe dream. Maybe that'll never happen again. You can never reunify the Star Wars fandom. Maybe. But if there was any hope of it, you've had some positive momentum. Yeah, this season of Mandalorian is a little bit weak, but generally speaking, most Star Wars fans really like the Mandalorian overall. Uh, the, the news of James Mangold doing the Origins of the Jedi, the Ahsoka trailer, like even crunky people like me on the Ahsoka character. I love this trailer. I can't wait to watch this show. And you're going to derail all of that for doing another Ray Skywalker movie. And look, I hope five years from now, after this movie comes out and I look back on this video going, wow, was I wrong? That movie ended up being one of the greatest Star Wars movies of all time. And I hope so. I keep my fingers crossed that that's the case. I hope it is. I hope this movie will be great. I hope it'll be awesome. But 
just from a strategic point of view, this is a very odd decision, in, in my opinion, like a really, really odd decision. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, Chris, you heard this news. Were you surprised by this? Is it the right move? Can you see some upside here that maybe I'm I'm maybe too much in the weeds to see right now? What do you think about this? I mean, it's such a big for why. It's such a big for why. Why are we doing this? That being said, Daisy Ridley is an amazing actress. And I think Ray is a great character who had a lot of potential that just got thrown into a poorly constructed story um and a big part of that for me you know that i am a last jedi fan there's not not everything fired on all cylinders for me but i did enjoy that film more than other people and i loved the idea of ray being a nobody i loved her, the idea of her choosing her own destiny and just happening to have these powers and not being some lineage character so all the palpatine stuff made me so frustrated oh so bad such like, a bad move why are we doing this um if you guys want to really backtrack way back when we were still in the the old old place in Burbank Rob and I were pitching like oh my gosh what if Rise of Skywalker is kind of like a Batman Begins clone story in that sense of taking nature and nurture and trying to make Jedi and they're sprung out across the universe that would have been a much more cool clone story than what we got but I digress uh I think if you do this correctly, 15 years set in the future, Ray being a different kind of Jedi, now we also know that other Jedi have been existing this whole time too. That whole notion of uh, Yoda talking to Luke and saying, when I die, the last of the Jedi is with you. Obviously that's not true. So she is out there collecting other Jedi. If there is some kind of thread left with Grogu who didn't finish Jedi training, but is powerful, we maybe talk to that character. There's a bunch of things that you could do here. It just seems so odd and out of place with how polarized fans are about this latest Star Wars trilogy to continue on with that and not start completely fresh and new. That's the biggest question I have here is, do we really feel that confident in this character to continue on a story that can potentially unite fans? Or are we just kind of like, well, let the chips fall where they fall? Yeah, because I have the same thought about Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson who's a filmmaker that I like very, very oh much. I love Ryan brilliant. Johnson. But I have said, despite the fact that I, I think he's absolutely fantastic, you can't do this Ryan Johnson new trilogy because it will just be too divisive with the film fan base. You just need to move on from that and, and let Ryan Johnson continue to make Academy Award nominated stuff like he's doing with Glass, the Glass Onion franchise mm -hmm. and Poker Face and po -po -po Poker Face. Sorry, uh, I won't know. <laughs> something happened, in the, something happened in the studio before we started shooting and I shouldn't have just said that. Anyway, uh, it's in my head again. Now it's there. Um, I mean, he's great, but I've said you can't. You can't, if you suddenly move forward with this, you are just even, but uh, uh, long before Ryan Johnson's new movies even start shooting, it's going to be completely divisive. And I, I just think this decision coming out on a day when they're announcing great things, like this Ahsoka trailer was great. We'll see how the Mandalorian movie works out. I hope it does well. It um, seems this, very grand scale that it, that the Mandalorian movie ties in all of the seri se series and then culminates with the end of, you know, the, the Rise of Skywalker. That seems like a big... I have a question about Stephen Knight. Didn't what, Weren't we just talking about him that he was pulled from... Stephen Knight was pulled from directing? What were we just talking about earlier this week or last you might, week? You might be thinking of Stephen S. DeKnight. Well, no, 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 because we the, the story was we were like, not Stephen S. DeKnight, Stephen Knight. Was... Yeah, we had a Stephen Knight story. I think it was Star Wars. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah, I thought... He yeah, was, yeah, because he had just been brought on to... to uh, yeah, he had was... just been brought on to replace... I wonder if it was this, because he's writing this. Yes, yeah, yeah, we yeah. talked. Yeah, we talked okay. about that. All right. So that's, uh, what before. The, that's what was tying it together. Okay. So I mean, I I just I don't know. May I ask a general fandom question, John? Yes. Because obviously, as we've talked about these different films too, and these different announcements. Oh, this one kind of sounds okay. This one sounds really promising. Oh, I don't know about this. I, I'm just looking at the chat, right? And it's kind of what we talked about before. Kathleen Kennedy takes a thermal detonator to Star Wars, <laughs> but this idea is good. I bet she has nothing to do with it. I'm wondering. I mean. I'm just as a fan trying to wrap my head around that part of we can have opinions and disagree about things with Star Wars, but why do we always place blame on one person? Is it just because as a fan you want to scapegoat sometimes? Like I, I can't ever wrap my head around this part of Star Wars fandom of like no, because, we need to be angry at one right. person. She was, she was last I checked, she was in charge of uh, Lucasfilm during Andor, yeah. and she was in charge. Well, see, you know that's I mean? the thing, right? Like I, I completely understand. Look, this is when you become stupid. Like, if you want to ascribe blame to Kathleen Kennedy about the things that go wrong, and guess what? She is the head of Lucasfilm. Yeah. That is where the blame goes. But 
if you going to play that game, then being the head of Lucasfilm, you also have to give credit when the victories happen. That's the disconnect. That I'm like, why is that not happening? Yeah, what are these I mean, two like when she, like, when They're everybody stupid. was loving Mandalorian, everybody wanted to say, same. well, she, she had nothing to do with Mandalorian. Um, yeah, she did. Yeah. Out of the stack of thousands of pitches for a new Star Wars show, she's the one who identified that Mandalorian was the one who had potential. She brought in John Favreau, and then she was the one who said, you know what would make this really click? I'm going to pair you up with one of our guys named Dave Filoni. I want you guys to work. I mean, you'll be in charge, but I, I want you guys to work together to make this because I think this would. She's the one who did all of that. And I get, listen, I give Kathleen Kennedy a lot of blame. I've been saying for three years now that she needs to leave Lucasfilm and she will be leaving soon. But you have to give credit where it's also due. And you get something like Andor, which I think might be the best Star Wars thing we've had since the original trilogy. You got to give her credit for that. When uh, Mandalorian one. works. What's that? Rogue One. Rogue One, you got to give her credit for that. And, and when Obi-Wan sucks, she's got to take the heat. Mm -hmm. When Book of Boba Vett sucks, she's got to take the heat. When she does not know how to figure out how to keep filmmakers and writers on board on a project or know, knows how to get on the same page with any of them, she's got to take the blame. Yeah. But if you're going to give credit, you've got to give blame. And if you're going to give blame, you've got to give credit where it's due. Because when you're just one of these things, well, everything that went wrong is her fault and nothing that worked right was had anything to do with her. Well, yeah. then you're just stupid. That's, that's then you're the just part stupid. that I'm just like, why can't we? Why is there no congruency here? Why are we all acting like Muppets? What's happening? But, <laughs> but listen, I'm not going to lie. There is a part of me I fully admit, and this is, I confess my sins. When I heard this last part that she's greenlit a Ray Skywalker movie, because we all know she's on her way out. We, we know probably five, six months from now, they'll make the announcement official that Kathleen Kennedy's leaving. But there was a part of me that thought that she is going scorched earth. She goes, huh, want to give me a hard time for our run Star Wars, huh? How's this? I'm just going to drop this little thing right here. Have fun. It's like she took an upper decker on a toilet in the company bathroom <laughs> as she's carrying her boxes out the door. You deal with the stench that I just left behind. And if you guys don't know what an upper decker is, go look it up. I'm not going to define it. At the it. same time, you don't have to watch everything. If you really yeah. didn't like the Ray Skywalker thing, then just skip it. It won't affect anything or any. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this news bums you out, there's no way you don't you don't need to watch it. There's I mean, so if much the Star Wars. character sucks, the character sucks. No, no, I, I, I agree. But again... I, I just, to me, the questionability of this, knowing that, look, you're trying to repair things with Star Wars, right? We're in a phase right now, you're trying to repair things. And it just seems like in the midst of trying to do some work to repair the image of Star Wars and all this kind of stuff, you got this happening, that's good. You got that happening, okay, that's good. Oh, we're going to go back to the most divisive thing that's ever happened <laughs> yeah. in Star Wars. Seems and we're going to bring back Ray. And again, I hope this movie's fantastic. I love Daisy Ridley as a performer. And I hope a few years from now, I'm going to look back on this video and go, whoo, so glad that that worked out. I, I hope that's the case, but well, it's going to be, in, in, amongst the fan circles, it's going to be pretty tough. To be fair, though, it would be hard to say you're moving forward, but Ray's not anywhere in it. That means you're completely rebooting the last trilogy. No, nah, yeah. you, you, know you set the next movie are you? J. 30 J. Abrams? years oh, in the future. Yeah, you could go way. 50 years yeah. in the future, right? There's a lot of ways There's around it. There's a lot of time it. in the world. There's a lot of time <laughs> in this fictitious uh, universe Can here. I just say this whole time, I thought we were talking about Ray Aura is getting a Star Wars movie. Ray is like, getting... Why are we so down about this? <laughs> that would be... <laughs> the laziest Jedi yeah. you've ever seen. The couch would be Tatooine. Uh... The couch would be Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever sandwich is uh, the cheapest that Man. day would be my lightsaber. Just <laughs> Chef pleasures, cooking with blue milk. Mm, me Metachlorians, <laughs> more like Lay's potato chips. <laughs> the Lay's potato chips is strong in this one. I will fight my sleep. That's my the enemy. That's it's not the yeah, shit. The dark side the, of sleep. Uh, the sleep. <laughs> the level of Lay's potato chips is off the charts in him. Mm, that's it. That's that. Yep. I'd I guess it. people would like that movie more. I think than this movie. Skywalker. <laughs> Could be. Like. Uh, uh, anyway, guys. Maybe Lay's. <laughs> question is Ray for Skywalker. you <laughs> what do you think about this they're, they're doing a Ray Skywalker movie hey, listen I hope it's going to be awesome maybe it can be an awesome movie I just think strategically it's a really odd decision when you're trying to reunite the fame I, 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 I don't know maybe I'm I'm just going to stay hopeful I'm just going to stay hopeful what do you guys think about this whatever your thoughts are jump down into the comment section below and leave your <laughs> thoughts there <laughs> We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, 
HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. And there's no worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. You'll be feeling like Gordon frickin' Ramsay in no time. And guys, look, we're always looking for more ways to save money. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. I've told you guys before, Anne and I love using HelloFresh. Not only is it really easy to put together fantastic looking and tasty meals, but it's also a lot of fun and you get this really great sense of accomplishment when you're looking at this prepared dish that you've made with your own hands. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia50 and use the code Campia50 for 50% off plus your first box ships free. That's HelloFresh.com slash Campia50 and using the promo code Campia50 for 50% off your first box ships free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit.